Hey, what's up guys? This right here is the Samsung Galaxy A72. It is Samsung's most expensive ACD smartphone, at least for now. And if you watched my impressions video of the phone from two weeks ago, I had said that it looks like an overall champ except in the performance department. And after having used this phone for around two weeks now, I believe that conclusion still holds true. So let's start this review by talking about the performance itself. It has Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G chipset paired with 8GB of RAM. Now, coming from the Snapdragon 730 on its predecessor, the A71, we're looking at what, 10 to 12% improvement, which honestly I think is not that much. Plus, at a similar price, there are tons of alternatives available that practically provide almost flagship grade performance and yes, 5G connectivity too. If you look at this chart over here, the Galaxy A72 is easily the worst performance per dollar phone in this segment. Now, don't get me wrong, the performance is not flat out terrible, it's just that the competition has gotten really fierce in this aspect over the past couple of years and Samsung choosing to compromise on this very aspect might be its own undoing. Just look at the gaming performance for instance. You're only able to achieve around 40 FPS in PUBG Mobile at its max settings, whereas the gameplay is much smoother in phones like the Poco F3 and the Realme X7 Pro that can hit the 60 FPS mark. And while the Snapdragon 720G on the A72 handles day-to-day -day regime and even heavy multitasking without breaking a sweat, I am not quite sure how it will hold up in like a year from now. Samsung does promise 3 years of OS and 4 years of security updates on this phone, but considering how the cheaper Galaxy A52 4G that costs around $100 less comes with similar features and the same chipset, the Galaxy A72 screams I am overpriced. Anyways, apart from the source of performance, Samsung has practically nailed every other aspect on this phone. First off, there's no denying that this is one of the best looking mid-range phones of 2021, at least for me. Likewise, I cannot get enough of the refreshing color options, which I hope Realme learns a thing or two in the future. But A72's design supremacy goes beyond the looks as it feels great on the hands too. It does not have sharp edges and is relatively comfortable to hold. Despite weighing a little over 200 grams, it does not feel that heavy either. Regardless, it's a big phone though, so if you're into smaller form factor, I think you will like what you get with the Galaxy A52 instead. Which brings me to thinking, maybe Samsung could have differentiated the Galaxy A72 with the A52 by at least providing metal frames and a glass back here, given its relatively premium stature. However, what I'm really happy with here is that we're getting premium features like IP67 dust and water resistance, which is something we never find on a traditional upper mid-range smartphone. For this review, I did drop the phone into a body of water for half an hour and it survived. So the water ingress protection here is actually what Samsung claims it to be. Now, moving on to the display, it's your classic Super AMOLED panel with a 90Hz refresh rate and as I said in my impressions video, it's excellent in terms of quality. Samsung has calibrated it well, so the colors are punchy and pleasing to the eyes. But you know what, everyone is talking about how the cheaper Redmi Note 10 Pro Max comes bearing a 120Hz OLED panel which looks superior on paper. So I compared it against the Galaxy A72 and found out that apart from the higher refresh rate and the higher peak brightness level, A72's display is much better in terms of color optimization and even touch response. Plus, Samsung has optimized its UI well to run at 90Hz, so no weird jitters or awfully low scrolling here. However, I do feel like the bottom chin on the 6.7 inch screen is slightly more exaggerated than it should have been. Other than that, the punch hole cutout up front is almost non-existent and things like SGS low blue light certification, dark mode optimization and high brightness mode makes this display only slightly inferior to a flagship level panel. Yet, the fingerprint sensor is still not that fast. But what you can do is turn off the fingerprint animation to make its performance slightly faster. It also gets a stereo speaker system, although it has underwhelmed me ever so slightly. Now, don't get me wrong, they're good and they sound balanced, but I had expected more in terms of loudness. By the way, it also comes with Dolby Atmos audio and a dedicated Dolby game mode that enhances the audio experience in games for richer sound quality. 
Okay, another aspect where the Galaxy A72 shines is in the camera department. You get a quad camera setup here with a 64 megapixel primary, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro, and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens. The primary and telephoto lenses are equipped with OIS, which is something few and far between in mid range phones. The 16 megapixel pixel binned primary images here are impressive with really good colors and details. And it does a good job with dynamic range too. So you can expect this camera to be reliable under any circumstance. I compared its cameras against the Realme X7 Pro and it's commendable that Samsung has broken past the vivid color optimization and moved towards making the pictures look more natural. All the while, A72's images have a slightly better dynamic range too, especially in difficult areas, but I do have to tell you that in many instances, both cameras have delivered a neck-to-neck -neck performance. Ultra-wide-angle images from the A72 have a wider field of view with ever so slightly better HDR capabilities as well, but still Realme is not that far behind either. The Galaxy A72 also has the same telephoto lens and zooming capabilities as the more expensive S20 FE, which is capable of 3 times optical and up to 30 times digital zoom. Here, the telephoto shots look good at up to 10 times magnification level, but beyond that, the quality depends upon the lighting conditions. In terms of portraits, I really wished for the A72 to use the telephoto lens, but it does not. Anyway, the portraits from its primary lens look good though. It has a more natural undertone than the Realme X7 Pro that makes the subject look red, like unnaturally red. Even selfies from the X7 Pro have that red tint for some reason. The A72 selfies also look warm but not unnatural like the competition here. Portrait selfies look very much like the normal ones from both phones where the X7 Pro continues to provide a reddish hue while the A72 tries to maintain close to natural colors. As things get dark, nighttime images from the A72's primary camera have better exposure and details. X7 Pro's images turn out to be slightly muddy in this regard. With the night mode turned on, Realme does improve the details and exposure a lot, but still Samsung's images look better. About the videos, well, I am slightly disappointed that the A72 does not have a 4K 60fps option. However, the company did provide an update enabling the 1080p 60fps video mode. Likewise, as I mentioned earlier, it has OIS in its cameras, which is a big plus. Hence, the videos from it come out stable across all resolutions. Even 3x zoom videos look considerably stable, which is nice, and you can also shoot 4K 30fps videos with its ultra-wide-angle camera. It's not as stable as the primary videos, but nothing to be disappointed either. Hey everyone, so this is a selfie video from the Samsung Galaxy A72 at 1080p 30fps resolution. You can also shoot selfie videos at 4K 30fps resolution. Um, as far as the quality uh, goes, the subject is looking nice. The exposure management looks uh, good as well. So overall, I think this is a good enough camera for vlogging. What do you think? Do let me know in the comments. As for the battery, you get a 5000mAh cell here which is quite enduring even with the 90Hz option turned on. You can squeeze out more than a day's screen on time on normal usage and even with heavy usage, the phone will last you through the day. You also get a 25W power delivery charger that is included inside the box. It takes the phone from 0 to 100% in 1 hour and 22 minutes exactly. Okay, this brings us to the conclusion, and if you roll back like a year, the Galaxy A71 and the A51 were different in a lot of ways. But the problem with this year's Galaxy A72 as compared to the Galaxy A52 is that it only offers a bigger screen, slightly bigger battery, and a telephoto zoom lens. So not the most compelling of differentiation, I think. So to be completely honest with you guys, I think the cheaper Galaxy A52 is a much better value option. It has all the goodies of the Galaxy A72 like a higher refresh rate display, IP67 rating and an almost similar camera experience. And just like the A52 5G which is exclusive to the western market, I think Samsung should have included a 120Hz refresh rate and a 5G Snapdragon 750G chipset in the A72 as well. So my verdict about the Samsung Galaxy A72 is that it's a good phone but it is ultimately haunted by its little sister the Galaxy A52. So that was all for our full review of the Samsung Galaxy A72. Next up, we're coming up with the reviews of uh, Xiaomi's latest Redmi Note 10 and the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max as well. So for that, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.